this man that has been getting attention on and offline, even in the court of law? Well, I can tell you that he is no friend of the Nigerian police for a start. In fact, he was arrested for setting six members of his church on fire. To be fair, not much is known about Reverend King. Most of us are aware that his real name is Chukwemeka Ezuko, not Ezuko as earlier reported. According to his uncle, he was born on February 26 in Umuleke village, Achena, Aguata, Anambra State. Ezugo went to Premier Primary School in Onicha and received a degree in psychology from Nandi Azikiwe University. At one point, he founded the Christian Praying Assembly up until 2006. Ezugo was the church's general overseer. Why exactly did he choose to be called Reverend King, similarly to what Martin Luther King Jr. was called? Well, these reasons remain unknown, same as the exact reason why he did what he did in 2006. In September 2006, Reverend King appeared before the Lagos court, but what was he accused of? Hmm. Let's see. According to numerous witnesses, Ezugo was forcing his parishioners to do ungodly things. For instance, he made them use adult toys on themselves or serve him naked. And if he suspected someone of witchcraft or any sort of sin, he would flood the person till they pass out. Hmm. He was also intimately involved with several female parishioners, even though some of them were married. A woman by the name Kelechi King claimed that she had to undergo four abortions because of him. Kelechi, a slim beauty who spoke with dread before an Ikeja High Court for nearly two hours during Reverend King's trial, also told the court that some months ago, Reverend King asked her to file a suit at a Lagos High Court to forcefully compel her parents to disown her so she could serve King totally. Even after she suffered an alleged terminal infection in her uterus from incessant abortions, she narrated that the priest forced her to have oral sex with him and then informed her that the Holy Spirit ministered to him to marry her. Where did this man get this kind of idea? I mean, what? how did he come up with this plot to deceive this young woman? He also asked her to go and get a ring, which she did, and they wedded before two witnesses in the church. Also, a man by the name Edwin Akubwe accused Reverend King of sleeping with his wife. Edwin, who was a leader of the Grace Ministers in Reverend King's church, made revelation in a counter affidavit he deposited by contesting the divorce suit brought against him by his wife of 13 years, with whom he is blessed with six children. He said that problems started in his marriage when Reverend King started having an affair with his wife, and he asked her to stop attending his church. Instead, she left the house and went to stay with Reverend King. The following day, the Reverend sent a boss and some men to go and pick up her things and then took away their six children to an unknown destination. But it wasn't Edwin's case that took Reverend King to court. It was something more sinister. According to the witnesses and victims, he lined up six members of his church before him and set them on fire for allegedly committing a sin of fornication. On September 26, 2006, Reverend King was tried for murder and several counts of attempted murder. Despite the fact that 10 people testified against him, Reverend King pleaded not guilty. I mean, that was expected, but the judge knew there was more to this man than meets the eyes. Although the case seemed pretty straightforward, the final decision was not made until several months after due to delays from the court and lawyers. Nevertheless, on January 11, 2007, Justice Joseph Oyewole announced that Reverend King was guilty of all the counts. This meant that he had to serve 20 years in prison for attempted murder, but he also had to be hanged for murder after serving the sentence. But again, Reverend King disagreed. 
he was very disappointed and needed to do something about the unfavorable judgment. So in 2008, Reverend King and his lawyers filed an appeal since he claimed he was not guilty. He took the court of appeal nearly five years to arrive at a decision on the appeal. Then, on February 1st of 2013, the judge announced that the 2007 decision still stood and nothing changed. Hmm. Reverend King was refused bail entirely, but that did not stop him. In fact, it was very important for him to get a fair judgment. The evidences and eyewitnesses accounts in court did not matter to him. He just wasn't guilty and wouldn't let the case be. So he took the case further to the Supreme Court of Nigeria and waited additional three years for the verdict. Ironically, it came on his birthday, February 26, but again, the judge dismissed his appeal and affirmed his death sentence. I mean, this is not what Reverend King expected from the court. He's been going from one case to the other. He's been trying and trying and appealing. And all throughout the years, they kept upholding the initial judgment. Meanwhile, before and after his conviction, Reverend King had to be relocated numerous times. First, he started off at Kaduna prisons, even before his sentence, where he soon began to organize prayer sessions and meet with influential people. This caused some undue tension at the prison, so he was relocated. After he was finally convicted, Reverend King was placed in Kirikiri prisons in Lagos. However, he did not last long in there. While he was waiting for his appeal, he was accused of having intimate relationship with female prison guards. Then he was relocated to Kujet prisons, Abuja, and then back to Kaduna. What a troublesome man. Despite all that, some members of Reverend King's church still support him to date. Every year since his conviction, they celebrate his birthday on February 26th. They continue to believe and handle the activities of his church. At one point, they paid for 17 newspaper advert pages to celebrate his birthday. So the question on every Nigerian's mind is, has Reverend King been executed or still on death row? This is a very controversial man that made headlines even while in prison, but nothing has been heard of him since then. So where is Reverend King? Or perhaps he accepted his fate and surrendered himself to justice? Does that sound like a reasonable conclusion? I don't know. Maybe you know. If we consider January 2007 to be the starting point of his 20-year sentence, this means that Reverend King has served over 15 years of it. Unless someone decides to move his death sentence to a much nearer date, he still has five more years to go. The Reverend King story seems like something straight out of a horror movie. It is terrifying to think about what this man was capable of. We hope he gets the punishment he deserves so that nobody else would have to suffer through what his victims went through. Well, that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please like and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on TikTok at Stories with Oluchi where I share short stories similar to this one but not always on YouTube. Thank you for watching and have a good day.